everyone welcome to a new series of videos for basic world creation um we i'm not sure how many parts there are going to be right now because i'm not quite sure of my intentions i just record videos and we go you can see here i'm in my home world and uh, i'm just gonna get started we're gonna create a world we're gonna set the floor we're gonna set the skybox we're gonna save it and then we're gonna reload back into it just to prove you know, go through the whole flow so first of all open up that belt menu i've got private ui on so you can see it private ui is a uh private layer of your UI that only usually only you can see. There's a setting on the camera that allows other people to see it from the camera perspective here. And uh, so that's what we're utilizing so that the video shows you the private UI. The belt menu is an example of private UI as is the camera feed. So on the belt UI, right at the bottom left here is new world. Let's open that up. On the left here, you'll see world templates. And on the right here, you'll see session settings. Um, we're going to start with the world templates. So the world templates are like a, what your world's going to look like when you when you start the world. Space world is this skybox up here and a um, kind of lightning or electric grid kind of um, platform in the center. Your default local world and uh, home world will basically be a space world template. Basic empty is like that, but it's a default um, skybox and a white platform in the center. Grid space is uh, like this, where there's a grid that goes off into infinity, but it's not this color, it's like a solid grid. You'll see that in a moment. Uh, micro world is, uh, I'm not quite sure, like it makes everything weird. There's like particles and uh, it's meant to like give the impression that you're small and that the particles are, I think, dust or something. I'm not quite sure why it's there. Um, I don't know what testing scaling is. I haven't been there yet. Scratch space is, um, quite frankly a mess but it shows off like what you can do with neo so go there take a look it's got lots of sort of moving objects and just random strewn about stuff that you can play around with um the rest i haven't also tested but uh they're more sort of situational templates so instancing test chess the uh instancing system physical motion test has a lot of platforms you can jump on just to test the locomotion system out I rarely use anything other than these first three and most of the time I use basic empty or grid space we to use grid space today as it sets up some uh, advanced stuff for us that's super handy. Namely the platform, sorry, the world, like the ground, and uh, the skybox are all set up nicely for us. You'll see in a second. So go ahead and select grid space from the list. And then I always name the world something right from the get-go so it's not confusing later. I'm going to call this tutorial world. And then here, I'm going to set this to nobody, just because we're recording. You could build collaboratively, in which case just set it to any of the other access levels here. Let's hit go. And you'll see we're in the world. I'm going to close out my belt UI and walk around to these two panels that are here by default. This one on the left controls the ground. It's controlling the material that's applied to the ground. So if I were to go ahead and change the far color zero here to red, you'll see we get a nice red grid. We won't be using this because we're going to change up the floor texture almost immediately, so I'm going to go ahead and close it. This here is the Gradient Sky Material Inspector, and it controls the skybox in the world. You can see right now that it's just uh, a base color of black, and that's why the sky is black. If we add a gradient here, and we specify a direction, which is the direction the gradient should go in, one in the Y is good. And then we say go from black to about there on the white and we've got to turn up the transparency there you'll see here we've now got a um gray fade going on you can also change this to say yellow now we've got a yellow fade going on if we change the from and to it'll just where the gradient starts so right now the majority of the black part of the gradient is going on beneath the floor so if we fly and go beneath you'll see it's black and so here we can say, hey, go from 0.2, and that should, maybe it's higher than that. Yep, it sure is. So 0.8, and there you go. We'll see we've got the kind of black ribbon coming down this way. We can flip this upside down. We just do negative one here. And now we've got this weird sort of ribbon effect. Um, probably more on the gradient scan material later, but it's there if you want to play with it. And I wanted to explain it briefly just so that you could take a look when it came into the world. Um, what we're going to do now is just replace those instantly. So I've got private UI, so I'm going to open up my inventory. 
We're in my avatar folder right now, so we're going to go back to the root. And then we're going to go to Neo's Essentials. And we're going to live pretty much in here and in a couple of folders. So I want you to go to Skyboxes, and then just, just pick one. I'm going to close my eyes and just double click on one. There we go. Equip it like a material tooltip. Point at the sky and trigger. And you'll see the skybox is applied. I got a good one here. I could have ended up with something that looked a lot different and it will inform the little tutorial world that we make. I could have got like a dark atmosphere or made it like a slightly spooky one, but we've got a nice pleasant cloud sky. With the skybox set, go back to Neos Essentials, go to materials, and then again, just pick one. Um, all of these are kind of valid. There are a few that are weirder than others. I'm going to go ahead and pick ground. I'm going to go into Dylan Sison. Uh, and I'm going to pick this one. I use this a lot. Actually, you know what? Let's change it up. I always use that one. I'm going to use that one. Same concept. It's um, a piece of ground, but uh, a bit less harsh on the green there. So now you have this ground material and you need to apply it to the floor. To do that, go back to the inventory. Go to Essential Tools, spawn a Material Tooltip, which is this uh, circular grey one. Here it is. Equip it, drop the material in, point at the floor, and you're done. Let's go into Fly Mode, which we're in. You can see here we've got a world. The um, platform here, the square land, doesn't go on forever, but it goes on sort of sufficiently large enough for... Um, most worlds. You can extend it if you need to, but do bear in mind larger worlds are going to be uh, harder to navigate and take up more resources, etc. Um, you'll see here that the ground is kind of uh, patchy and you can see that there's a grid. Don't worry about it too much. When you land, um, it's less noticeable. Uh, additionally, it's less noticeable with other materials. Uh, Dylan's materials are um, very low, uh, low resolution, which is why the grid is more uh, prevalent here. I'm going to respawn the material inspector and just change some properties of the ground to help improve this. So we're going to get a new material inspector, point at the ground, secondary select, the ground snaps into our view, and then we can hit edit. Here we're just going to increase the texture scale to 2 on both axes by 2 and 2. I actually want to go the other way. And now we kind of spread things out a bit. I'm actually going to change the old ground material. There's a reason why I used it. Here we go. Just play around. Try out more materials. Um, there's a lot around. Um, there are ones that are high resolution and you'll have less. I keep despawning my tool. Much better. This is a little grid, but it's less noticeable. With that done, let's save this world so that we uh, can save our process, uh, progress. So if you go to the belt menu again, and you go to the um, menu here, the second option, this is save, hit save, and then do save as. This world, uh, world orb will appear. At this state, it's not saved. What we need to do is find out a place to save it. You see here, there's an option to save here. Um, that doesn't make sense for the um, world that you're in, but it allows you to take this world orb to another world and then it'll say save here and you can save it to that world. That'll allow you to do like a world hub for navigation. Most of the time I save to my inventory. So if I open up my inventory and I go to my worlds folder, you'll see here I've got a bunch of uh, just random world orbs. I don't know what most of these are. Some of them are published, some of them aren't. I can now hit this save to inventory button. And you'll see it's down there as Tutorial World. I need to clean this up. I will do that later. With it being in Tutorial World, I can respawn it out and it will um, it'll be visible. To prove this, I'm going to delete this world orb and we're going to close. When closing a world that you're working on that you've um, put some detail in, you have multiple options when you close the world. You've got Close and Save, Close and Save As, and Discard Changes. Close and save is the best bet if you're the only person working on it, or if you're like halfway through. It will save and then immediately close. You know, everything's up to date. 
Close and save as will allow you to save it as a new world, and discard changes will get rid of your changes. I often do discard changes on a finished world of mine when I'm hosting a hangout world, like the tea house or the box, like that's a finished world. But when I'm in there with friends, etc., I might cause a mess of all the like stuff I'm spawning. For now, we're just gonna use close and save. And you'll see I'm back in my home world. I go back to my inventory here and I spawn out the tutorial world orb. I can now click it, open up the menu, start a session, set it back to private again, and hit start. And we're back here. Let's add uh, a few props and things to the world to make it a little bit more homely. So I'm going to again open up my inventory and I'm going to go to um, Neos Essentials 3D Models and we're going to go inside... Uh, is it biology? No, I can never remember where the trees are. Nature, there we go. Trees. And I'm going to spawn this big bushy tree here. So now we've got a tree and I'm going to just drop a few around in the world. Bit of a forest going on here. Let's see what else we can do. Uh, I don't know what these are. Let's take a look. Uh, looks like we've got a patchy tree. You know, no, no leaves or many branches. Um, and then we've got a slightly different type. This one's a, like, that's more like an evergreen. This one's more like a, I don't know, tree names, but whatever type of tree that is. Let's go back, see what else we've got. Uh, mushrooms. I don't really want mushrooms. Let's go into furniture. We'll add this bench. And we'll put that in the world there. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. It's more like a picnic bench. There we go. You may find that stuff is um, hard to position at first. You'll get used to it. Like here, it's not, it's not, uh, it's slanted. So what we can do here is just grab it and make it better there. It doesn't have to be precise all the time, but that's, uh, that's good enough for me. Actually, maybe a little bit this way now. There we go. As it's a test world, we don't need to be precise at all. Let's see what else we can add. Um, I have a full folder of food somewhere, so I'm going to go ahead and grab some food. So go 3D models and then food. I have a ton of food here. Uh, I particularly like these 3D scans from uh, Fruks. I think like a nice cake will do, and then we'll stop there. There we go, there's a cake. Uh, let's add a one more M. Uh, Mega coffee, there we go. Once again, we're gonna hit save, save. And that's how you save incremental builds of the world. So now I've saved that incremental um, addition to the world. And now because I've saved it, I'm gonna make a mess. So we're gonna throw a tree in the air. We're gonna throw the table up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the world, but I'm going to hit discard changes because I just saved. So close, discard, and I'm back in my home world. Let's hit start session again on the tutorial world, set it to private, and go back in. And here is our... Um, is a little table. I hope that proves how you can make a, a simple world very quickly. The grid space with a skybox and a ground material makes it start feeling like your own world very quickly. You go from a kind of like desolate space to um, skyboxes and ground quite quickly. In the next tutorial, I'm going to go over spawn points as uh, they deserve a video of their own. Uh, that'll show you how to spawn. Like you noticed over there that we spawned the other side of the forest. So I had to fly through the forest to get to my picnic table here. Let's see if we can fix that next time. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.